Welcome to Coastal Forage with me, Craig Evans. Again, uh, we're here in beautiful West Wales now, uh, on St Bride's Bay in Pembrokeshire. And we're going to be filming uh, further up the coast. We're going to be looking at things like uh, some of the rock pool life, we just crabs, we'll turn some stones over. Uh, we'll, we'll do some cooking as well, we'll cook some cockles and mussels and uh, whatever else we may find. And uh, I hope you enjoy. Where we're going to go today now is um, up behind me, uh, in the distance, you can see uh, Newgale Sands and Druidson Haven. And if you look across to uh, the bay there, we've got, um, we've got Newgale, Solver, St David's. There's some nice ships sheltering from uh, the weather in the bay here. And across then you can see Skomer Island. The sun is out few showers about but uh, hopefully it's going to be a good day and uh, myself and Clow are going to enjoy ourselves and I hope you will too. Just at the hedgerow now just before we're going to park a couple of uh, things that we're going to use in our in our meal later on we've got some delicious navel wort or penny wort a nice like, succulent and it's uh, perfect at this time of year and into uh, from now to March really. Hmm. Very refreshing and delicious. To me, it tastes like a cross between Monge 2 and cucumber. Very nice plant, so we'll have some of that. Mm. Now, then we've got um, very young Alexanders. Now, Alexanders was introduced uh, to the UK uh, by the Romans. It's called Alexanders after the city of Alexandria in Egypt. Uh, where they uh, was known as the pot herb of uh, of Alexandria. So the thing is, this this plant is reminiscent of a uh, tastes a bit like like a celery. Uh, all the plant is edible from the flowers to the seeds to the roots. So today we're going to pick some of these leaves because the stalks aren't quite developed enough now to cut up and stir fry as a flavour. And uh, again, very powerful, powerful celery depth of flavor that is, is, is quite good so we'll harvest some and we'll uh, use it in a meal help us out. right before we go down on to uh, into the rock pools on the beach uh, just show you uh, a little bit about history of where of where where we are I'm actually sitting on the old uh, colliery spoil tip of the old Trevran colliery and behind you can see the old smokestack. Now the coal that was produced here and in uh, all of Pembrokeshire was anthracite and you can see there's pieces of it in the old tip. I'll try and dig a piece up for you. And uh, as you can see it's exceptionally shiny it looks uh, like black glass, like obsidian, but it's very, very high carbon, hardly any impurities, and Queen Victoria, in her time, she insisted that um, only Pembrokeshire anthracite was burnt in a royal yacht. So a very interesting part of the world, and this particular mine closed down in about 1910, I believe. Uh, going into the rock pools now, come across this bed of seaweed, and in this case, it's, uh, it's bladder rack and called bladder rack because you can see the, the air filled bladders there. Um, and uh, there's something which I've shown you before on uh, on YouTube videos it's a special kind of uh, periwinkle called a flat periwinkle, it's actually feeding on the seaweed. There's one there, look, there's one there, and then there's a fill there. See them? Let's pick them up in various stages of uh, of their lives. So these actually feed on the seaweed itself, and these come in uh, different uh, colour varieties from browns, greens, reds, multicoloured. Uh, but here they uh, seem to be yellow, and uh, without things like herbivores like uh, limpets, uh, periwinkles, top shells, uh, and 
and things like that, um, the whole shoreline would be covered uh, with seaweeds. So all a balance of nature. So uh, the yellow feed on the seaweeds, and, it's, and here the, the, the greens and yellows. But sometimes if they're living on red seaweeds, they, they, they've got different colours. So for camouflage, the reason these are yellow and green is because they actually look like the tips of uh, of the seaweeds as the sun is coming through it. See the sea, seaweed through the sun, it's a very, very similar colour. So even though they, they look yellow and uh, uh, quite bright in the in cloudy weather, they're actually quite camouflage, you know, amongst, amongst the seaweed. Now we're going to turn some stones over now and see what we can find. Uh, but before I lift the stone, um, I'll, I'll tell you that after lifting the stone, always return it to its original uh, location because animals have evolved to live under the stones and not be exposed to the air, so always put them back. So on the top of this rock, you know, you can see a few things, but uh, limpets, a few barnacle species, a few types of uh, seaweed. I've got to lift it up and see what's underneath. Oh yeah, there's a, there's a nice, uh, nice assemblage, few things on there. We can see two species of crab. There's the broad clawed porcelain crab, which is a filter feeder. There we go. And on the top, on there, John, if you can see, we've got, I did see a long clawed porcelain crab in a minute. No, no they're all broad claws. Um, we've got a very young stingwinkle. That, uh, that bows holes in other shells and eats them from the inside. Um, down here we've got a sea snail, a yellow sea snail. Lift that up. And the sea slug, that back in the water. Um, then we've got, ah, there he was, different kind of crab then called a long clawed porcelain crab. If I just get this up and show you, it's so called. No, it's not. It, <laughs> it's a broad claw. My, eye, my eyes thought it was a, a, lo a longer claw. Let me put it back in the water. And a few other things covered for camouflage and protection. We've got stones and shells and bits of seaweed, but underneath it is actually a very pretty shore urchin. And, uh, these urchins are members of the starfish family. Pretty animal, lovely green spines with purple tips. We've got various in the top shells related to periwinkles, feed the same way. And uh, there's another top shell, you can see inside it. And if you look, you can see that it's uh, got a mother of pearl effect inside. Let me put that back down there. And like I say, always return, return the rock as it was. I have explained before how limpets have uh, one of the hardest substance in nature, substances in nature uh, as part of their, their tooth. And if you look down here, you can see uh, these nice old limpets clamped down. But the reason they've got that hard substance is they actually grind down the rock to uh, make their shells actually fit perfectly uh, in the rock. If you come across, you can see then where that hard substance has actually made, has ground down the rock uh, to, to form that seal. There's another piece there, look. And if you look across this way, this limpet there, you can actually see it sat down because there's a ridge under it, so there's no way any uh, winter storm is going to dislodge that. So, uh, well done, limpets. So pick this rock up, see what's there. Again, barnacles and uh, limpets on the top. What have we got? Ah, there we are. There's a, there's a crab. In this case, it's a, it's a common show crab. It's a male because you can see the, the triangular. A flap it's got there, but for some reason the poor thing's uh, lost its, uh, its main claw. Uh, but the thing is, uh, when it next molts, it'll grow another one back. So, 
Look at that. And uh, if you look underneath, this is my favourite seaweed. This now is pepper dulse. And uh, we're going to use this in our, in our meal later. And uh, when you taste it, I'll taste it for you now on camera. And I'll just, uh, well, I can't wait to taste it. Hmm, yeah. outstanding. This, this one in particular has got a very, very strong taste of, um, I would say, a chilli kick, strong garlic, and, and a nice, nice rounded flavour of truffle. It's absolutely delicious. Let me come down again, John, you can see. You can see it growing just to identify it. That, that's about its size. It doesn't grow bigger than that. And it's very... Uh, Looks a bit bit branch branch like, very common. Um, but if ever you foraging for this, always eat it raw. If you dry it, the flavour will go. If you cook it, the flavour will go. So it's best used as it is. Maybe st stirred into a a pasta or a bongole or something like that. Mm. Very powerful flavour. My favourite. Just brought this up now. Quite an interesting example to show you. It's a, it's a velvet swimming crab, uh, and in this case, uh, again a male. And uh, you can see the uh, bright red eyes and the blue, quite sharp tips. And it's called a velvet swimming crab because its back legs are formed into paddles so they can swim. Now, what's interesting about this one is, apart from its being edible, you can see that its front claws, different sizes. So maybe on this last moat or the one before, uh, it's lost its claw and this one has grown smaller this time. So when it molts next time, hopefully it will grow back to the same size as normal. They taste delicious and uh, very, very common. One of my favorite crabs, but they can be quite aggressive. <laughs> this area now we've uh, come across my favorite seaweed as earlier uh, we tasted some pepper dulse further up the shore now we're a bit further down so this area seems to be uh, probably one of the best I've ever seen for pepper dulse very very common along the boulders here this is actually the low tide level as we speak now uh, and under the water you can see the pepper dulse growing and uh, come across coming up and uh, here's some of it as well. Just give you another look. And, uh, it's a delicious. Right then, we'll try this rock. This is uh, out out of water now. There's no water underneath, so I don't know what we're going to find. But we've got ah, there we are. On the end, you see that? There's one there and one there. Can you get a close up on that, John. See, it's, uh, this is known as a strawberry anemone for obvious reasons. It's, it's a red anemone, member of the jellyfish family, but it's got these little green spots on, which uh, resemble strawberry seeds. And when the tide comes in, its tentacles will come out and it'll feed just like uh, most other anemones uh, on plankton and, and small fish and crabs and shrimps and things. Uh, something interesting about these is that if you Expose them to ultraviolet light, they'll uh, they'll fluoresce. Quite interesting. Okay, another one there, and barnacles, dog whelks, and the usual things there. So we'll put that back as we found it. To get on with his life. Right, so sitting on this stone now, we just come across. So I'll lift the stone up, see what's underneath. No, massive fork. Let's have a look. Oh, goodbye. Other right, way. Goodbye. Oh, there we are. A few things there, look. Can you see these fish? We've got one there. One in there. Okay, put the back there. And there's another one gone there somewhere. So we put, put the stone back. And I'll lift the fish up for you to see. So this is known as shani a type of blenny and this fish in fact uh, I mentioned this in other uh, videos uh, can actually live out of water as long as it's damp it'll live among seaweed and uh, it'll you know 
long enough for the tide to come back in. If you look at its um, front big fins there, pectoral fins, it actually uses those to walk from rock pool to rock pool. I'll put it back on the stone and maybe we'll be able to see it, see it happening. There we are. It's gone in there. <laughs> As I said earlier, it's mid-November down here on the Pembrokeshire coast on St Bride's Bay and uh, this is one of the hotspots for seaweed diversity. So this particular pond now is a bit like a sea garden. So we've got seaweeds. Uh, this one's known as bifurcatum bifurcatum. And come across we've got this one called coral weed, uh, Corallina fissionalis. Uh, it's, it's a pink uh, coralline seaweed and uh, in medicine in fact uh, I believe that the uh, the calcareous uh, uh, grit element of it is used in medicine it's used as a filler in medicine for bone grafts because it's very similar to human bone another one then uh, an edible one we come across this which is a uh, sea lettuce uh, quite, a, quite an attractive uh, a seaweed uh, called uh, one of the elva species. It's uh, edible in so far that you can uh, dry it and crumble it over your food as a condiment. Quite quite tasty. We've got some young kelp there that normally grows further out. Uh, what else have we got? We've got some I'm not sure what that one is, I'll have to look at one up for you. Uh, but, you know, common in the area. Bits of, bits of Irish moss, uh, edible as well. You've eaten that probably, uh, well, most people have, because it's used as uh, thickness in, um, in um, medicines, toothpaste, ice creams, etc. So this is called Chondrus crispus. There's probably about another 30 or 40 uh, mini species here that uh, I, I can't see and can't remember the names of. But, uh, nice area, nice area. And uh, as it's mid November, you know, it looks as if it's a, it's a garden in, in a spring day. So I love the seaside. <laughs> See what's there. Let's have a look. Slowly. Oh, there's a good velvet swimming crab. Oh, there we are. Look, if you look under there, John, can you focus down between those two stones? Two things there. There's a broad clawed porcelain crab, crab actually lying on the back of a, a shiny fish. See there, there's the crab on the top there. Okay. And underneath it, I'll, I'll scare it away now. The fish can see his eye there. So we'll just do that. There he goes. <laughs> I'll just pick this little uh, little pebble up now, just to show you how much life there is in the in the sea here. This is a normal rock. As you can see, it's full of life. There's different slimes and microalgae, different kinds of worms on it. So this end of it's got a nice uh, sponge colony of sponges on it. And they're quite, quite photogenic there. You've got a nice uh, purple coloured uh, uh, encrusting coralline algae. So uh, reminiscent of, uh, of tropical waters, I'd say. It's uh, wonderful what we have here in Wales. We'll put it back to get on with his life. Okay. Right, another species of crab we haven't seen today now. I'll put this back. This crab, uh, they, they grow to about four or five times that size, about this big. This is known uh, for obvious reasons, a hairy crab. So, uh, well, well camouflaged, see it uh, walking about. Put it on there and you can see it'll make its way back to the water. What's under this one? Ah, there we are. A couple of things here. 
this is a this is a this is a pie crust or a xantho crab pie crust for obvious reasons and it's got some huge claws uh, male in this case give you a nasty nip these when they uh, as you can see they're quite quite strong and uh, these come in various colors I've seen these in reds greens browns yellows and if you look at it when I've said before that in the ocean everything either eats everything else or lives on everything else so you can see the little barnacles growing on its on its claws there on the back nice little uh, bit of biodiversity so I'll put it back there Very small if I can get it. Uh, brittle star. See, lots of species of these come in different colours, and these feed by uh, raising their arms up into the water column and catching bits of plankton. So, very small one that. And sometimes you get them in blues, greens, blacks, reds. They're quite nice. A nice purple coralline algae and you've got the uh, pepperdils and you can see on the side there these are uh, snake locks anemones any of you saw the video where thou didn't stop barking uh, you, this is what we're trying to show you you're not barking now so i can explain a bit more so these now are snake locks anemones and they've got quite vicious stinging tentacles which can't be withdrawn like other anemones so once these get on uh, your skin, uh, the thin part of your skin, not, not your palm now, but it's your arm, it'll cause quite a, a painful lesion. So if you see these, leave these well alone. And right next to it there, can you focus on that, John? That's a different kind of anemone again. To me, my eyes are not very good, it's a small one. It's uh, a gem anemone. So these feed like normal anemones, they can re retract their tentacles. Quite quite, uh, quite nice little uh, nice little features they are. Uh, but all anemones, they feed just like jellyfish. They, they're carnivores. They uh, sting their prey, be it plankton or fish or crabs, and, and digest them. So we'll put it back. There you go. Okay, right, so just picked up this nice strawberry anemone now, you can see the big uh, seed effect on it. Uh, when tide comes in, it's withdrawn its tentacles now, but quite a beautiful anemone. And uh, that's a, quite a nice example, that's, that's a big one. And on the rock itself, you can see there's a couple of top shell grazers grazing the algae. And these white things here are something called keel worms. It's a worm which builds itself a calcareous uh, tube and it lives in it for protection. But uh, yes, we'll put it back where we had it from. So under uh, that rock I've just picked up now, there's quite a number of these what we call broad clawed porcelain crabs. Now they're not true crabs because they don't have the same number of legs as normal crabs do. So if you look they've only got uh, three pairs of legs whereas a normal crab has four pairs. So they've got these big broad claws and what they do with those, the way they feed is they actually comb the water column with little hairs in there uh, and all the living plankton and, and uh, animal life it'll actually then eat so yeah so very common They're from the mid shore down just showing uh, part of, uh, of our local biodiversity extremely common these are uh, next to one of the cushion stars so like everything else we'll put them back in the water where they from yeah. Too much under there. U usual sponges. 
And on the top, look, we've got, uh, I was hoping you'd see some of these. See these things, John? There, and there. They're actually colonial sea squirts. Now, the sea squirts are our oldest living ancestor, but these live in, in colonies. Each one of those spots is, is an individual animal, but living together. Now, the larval stage of these has the uh, makings or remnants of, of an early backbone. So when, when they spawn and become larvae, they swim about. And uh, if you trace an ancestor's back, it's the earliest known backboned animal. So uh, that's your great, 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 great. I'll be here for a few weeks saying great, great, great grandfather. Okay, now, under that rock now, I just picked up these, these little fish. Now these are members of the seahorse family. They're known as worm pipefish. Now, a few species of these in the in the UK. There's a, a greater pipefish, which is about, I don't know, 0.6 of a metre long, and about so thick, with big scales. Another one called snake pipefish, which is about 18 inches long, a brilliant fish with lovely blue hoops around it. And this is the smaller species. And if you look at the, uh, the mouth of it, a very, very tiny mouth, and it feeds on uh, microscopic plankton and algae in the water column. So, quite, quite common. Put them back. I'm just trying to see, because let's look underneath, because sometimes these haven't got them. No, not not now. But when these breed, the the the, the females pass the eggs onto the males to incubate. So that, that's quite a big pipefish that is. So put them back. And uh, we, we may find come across another one with it with eggs in, but there'll be a male. Put them back in. No. Just, just a little fishies. This fish here now is a uh, is known as a as a shore goby. Or a rock goby. It's, uh, it's got prominent eyes, and the back of its dorsal fin is a nice, nice uh, orange colour. Feeds on invertebrates and anything else. So it's quite quite a, quite a fat-faced fish, and they grow to about that big maximum, and uh, quite common. So we'll put it back where it was. So we've uh, brought with us now some nice wild garlic, uh, nice big thick bulbs. You can see the green tips because uh, it's November. These will start sprouting probably towards uh, maybe early January. We've got some nice uh, rose hips which we'll, uh, we'll use. So let's chop the roots off. There. Like that. So today we just use the rose hips as a garnish for, for effect. So we've got some nice uh, unsalted Welsh butter to fry the garlic in. Let's chop these up. Take about another five minutes before the stove is uh, ready to cook on. Some nice butter in there. What we're going to cook today now? Um, on the way down, uh, you saw earlier, uh, we went to the hedgerows and we've uh, gathered some of this nice uh, succulent navel wort. Uh, I brought with me some. Uh, rocks on fire and we'll stir fry up uh, with with the garlic butter as well just for a change some of these very very young tender uh, shoots and leaves of uh, Alexander's so the mussels that we've got they're, they're nice big mussels today they were I picked these uh, the other day um, in a place uh, in Carmarthenshire not from this beach and they've actually cleaned them and scraped them nice nice big mussels and cockles from the same area 
So we're going to stir fry the butter, garlic, uh, the rocks on fire, the Alexanders, and we're going to then uh, steam the cockles and mussels uh, with uh, some of the uh, roast hips. You don't cook these, these are a salad vegetable. We'll eat these as an accompaniment. So uh, let's go for it. Right, I'll put some of the uh, wild garlic in, give that a little flavour. That's bubbling away. So we're going to uh, stir fry for flavour as well some of the herbs, which is the rocks on fire, Alexander's. And the cockles and mussels in. Okay. Some of the glow chips. Okay, and uh, we got the water to get the steam going. Okay, there we are. We'll uh, put the top on now, and in a few minutes' time, they'll be steamed and done. Yeah, it won't be long. Lovely. Okay. We'll put some in there. Okay, so here we go. So, so there we go. In, in our oyster shells, we've got cockles, mussels. Uh, we've got uh, steamed Alexanders with um, uh, rocks on fire. And, and as we said earlier, got my favourite seaweed. We put the bits of uh, pepper dots on it, which is absolutely delicious. So there we are. And there's plenty left in the bowl as well in cooking away. So uh, let's have a go. Let's have a taste. I'll try uh, one of the mussels with a bit of, uh, in this case, a bit of the uh, rock on fire inside. Hmm, some fire makes a difference. And the cockles. Nice and sweet. But what I really want to try is some of the nice mussels. I'll try these. I'll try and put the bits of the the raw pepper dust seaweed inside. It's uh, like I said, tastes of garlic, truffle, and a bit of chili. Hmm. That's heavenly. I'll do that again. Do you only want to try these? They, they are absolutely delicious. So, and that. Let's see, put some of the, the seaweed in. It's important to use it raw because if you cook it the, or steam it, the flavour will go. Mm. It's fit for the king, that. Absolutely stunning. Right then, here's the fruits of our, of our labour today and uh, our cooking. So what we have on, on the oyster shells is uh, some lovely, uh, in this case, Kamadin Bay um, mussels, some rose hips, cockles, we've got uh, Alexander's and stir-fried stir -fried, um, rocks on fire, um, all in Welsh uh, unsalted butter with uh, wild garlic in the sauce and uh, sprinkled over the top we've got this delicious and I really mean it these are delicious raw pepper dill seaweed and they, they are literally out of this world when it's combined with uh, with the food here so I know I've already uh, uh, eaten some on camera but I'll do it again because I think the way to eat them is take off one of the lovely lovely mussels 
put in the pepper dill seaweed inside raw and then eat it hmm until today I've never tried that but it is absolutely delicious hmm very very nice So, thing is though, it's getting dark now. Uh, it's uh, coming up to, I think it's about half past four, something like that. And the sun's just about to go down. Some lovely uh, shots across the bay here. So, all I would say now is uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, thank you for coming along with me. I've had a, a whale of a time turning over rocks and uh, looking at various aspects of our sea life. Had a nice meal. And, uh, if you like uh, what you see, please uh, click uh, and be notified by clicking the bell on top. What I say as well, if you really want to get um, uh, notified of uh, my videos, just follow me on Facebook, which is uh, Coastal Foraging with Craig Evans. On my Instagram account, it's uh, Coastal Foraging with Craig. Uh, if you want to come along on the coast, please do, you're very welcome. And my website is Coastal Foraging, sorry, it's www coastalforaging.co.uk and uh, again myself and Clow and, uh, and John is doing the filming, an excellent job uh, we'll see you next time